In this video, I'm going to go ahead and solve for x. We have 3x minus the square root of x minus 6 equals 2x. So whenever we have this radical, it makes things interesting because we have to be careful on how we go about doing this. So like what I'm thinking about doing is I'm thinking about getting that radical on one side by itself and then squaring it, which may or may not cause some sort of issue. We'll see. But I think that's going to be my go-to route right now is try to get that radical by itself and then we'll be able to square it. So if I have like square root of x equals, I'm just going to you know just say 4, what I'm then allowed to do is squaring both sides. So then I'd be left with x equals 16. So let's see that. Let's, let's, let's try that. So here we go. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get x by itself, or the square root of x by itself. So I'm going to subtract 3x. So I'm left with negative radical x minus 6 equals 2x minus 3x is negative 1x. I'm going to add 6 over. So I'm left with negative square root of x equals negative x plus 6. And then I'm going to divide by negative 1. So I'm going to divide everything by negative 1, leaving me with square root of x equals positive x minus 6. Because this is negative x over negative 1. 6 over negative 1 is negative x. So then I'm going to square both sides. So I'm left with x equals. So we get x minus 6 squared. Let's go ahead and work that out. I'm going to distribute twice, so x squared minus 6x, negative 6 times x is negative 6x, negative 6 times negative 6 is positive 36, so we get x squared minus 12x plus 36, so we get x equals x squared minus 12x plus 36, okay. So now this is looking pretty good, because now I can set this equal to 0, hopefully factor or do something with that. So let's go ahead and subtract the x over. Probably shouldn't use red. Uh, let's go there. So I'm gonna subtract x. So I get zero equals x squared minus 13x plus 36. Cool. Now I can factor. Because I have a trinomial where I want two numbers that multiply to 36 and add up to a negative 13 which I could do because nine times four is 36, but I want it to add up to a negative 13. Nine plus four is positive 13. Well, what if I make both of these negative? Negative nine times negative four is a positive 36. Negative nine plus negative four is a negative 13. Boom, there we go. So zero equals x minus nine, x minus four. And then I set both of these factors equal to zero. So x minus nine equals zero. Probably shouldn't put the parentheses, but that's okay. X minus four equals zero. I'm gonna add nine over. So x equals positive nine. I'm gonna add four over. X equals positive four. So we have two potential solutions. It wouldn't be the worst idea in the world to check those just in case something weird happens. So I'm going to go ahead and just double check these. So we have 3x minus the square root of x minus 6. I'm just going to go up here. What are my two solutions? x equals 9 is x equals 4. So I'll go over here. So I'll try out 9 first. So we're going to do 3 times 9 minus the square root of 9 minus 6 equals 2 times 9. More times than not, I think they're going to work out. But uh, I think in this scenario, it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world to just check this check this over so i get on the left side whoops i get 18 equals 2 times 9 is 18 all right so that checks out and what else did i get i got x equals 4 let's just check that you, you know you never know you know you just you never know 3 times 4 minus the square root of 4 minus 6 equals 2 times 4 so it's going to be 12 minus 2 minus 6 which is 4, right? 3 times 4 is 12. Let me just double check this. 
Yeah, 3 times 4 is 12. 12 minus the square root of 4 is 2. 10 minus... So 12 minus 2 is 10. 10 minus 6 is 4. 4 is equal to 8? No. No, it is not. Not equal to 8. So x equals 4 does not work. So x equal to 9 is the only solution. Look at that. <laughs> awesome. One of the solutions doesn't even work. So this is why we check. Got to check those answers. I had a feeling... I don't know, I just I had a feeling when I saw those two numbers, I'm like, eh, I don't think that both of those are going to work out. Um, so yeah, always double check, because only one of them worked in this one. So just to kind of go back to the beginning, that first step, whenever I see this radical here, like I, I, that's usually my go-to strategy, getting this radical by itself. And sometimes, you know what, maybe that's not the best route. Sometimes it is. That would just be my go-to step if I'm able to do that. Uh, if I'm able to get that radical by itself, then that's good. Now, the other problem is, like, what if there's some x squared terms, and like, and then you had, like, an x, like, let's say this was, like, 3x squared, then that creates a little bit more of issues, because then we're going to have to square that, and that's going to become 3x to the fourth, like, that might get a little bit messy, but it worked out nicely here in this example, because this was 3x to the first, 2x to the first, so I was able to just get a single x term, uh, so that's just something to look out for, but yeah, that was my go-to strategy there. And then checking your answer at the end because x equal to 4 does not work in the end. So solving radicals, radical equations. Very cool.